again for a uh, second uh, installation of uh, a series on DNSSEC. Uh, this is Alan Clegg from ISC and uh, again welcome and thank you for uh, returning to uh, uh, wander down this path with us. Uh, I will tell you uh, one thing I am not feeling very well today so this is actually going to be a little bit shorter uh, presentation than last week. We will be doing the entire presentation though so enjoy. So today we're going to start out uh, discussing the uh, history of DNSSEC. Um, obviously, this begins with the introduction of DNS back in 1983. And uh, 1983 was a, a very historic year because that's the year I graduated from high school and started going to NC State. I started managing my very first Unix machine and believe it or not, I deployed DNS. Uh, I was uh, running a Microvax uh, with uh, uh, BSD 4.2 running on it and uh, actually installed one of the very first DNS servers at North Carolina State University. It's fantastic, uh, fantastic work. Uh, enjoyed, enjoyed doing it and playing with it very much. Uh, the mass uh, movement to DNS, however, really began more along the lines of 1988. It was, it was in its infancy between 83 and 88, but it really took off uh, when everyone discovered that, you know, the host file, hosts.txt, really wasn't going to, uh, to be a, a, very, a very fitting uh, way of uh, managing this, this huge network. Uh, now, everyone was using, began using this, but uh, there were some people that were doing some research, and one of them was Steve Bellavan, um, and he wrote a paper in 1990 uh, that I'll be giving a reference to on the next slide, uh, that showed some major flaws both in DNS and in the way that DNS was actually being used for authentication. Uh, the interesting, the most interesting thing about this paper was that it was actually withheld from publication. Uh, it was uh, written and then Steve said, you know, this is a, a little bit, um, maybe a little bit dangerous to, uh, to make public quite yet. So it was held and it was released at a later date. 1995, so about five years later, uh, the IETF uh, began working on something called DNSSEC, or DNS Security Extensions. And it took about four years for the original RFCs to be published. These uh, RFCs were published, and then the operators started looking at them and said, you know, this is absolutely impossible to deploy, and there's no way that we're ever going to use this. It's never going to be suitable for uh, for mass deployment. And at that point, the major fireball of the failure of the initial release of DNSSEC was seen way off in the horizon. Uh, it took another five years for uh, DNSSEC Biz, the, the second uh, modified version of DNSSEC to be published. And uh, that was done in March of 2005. This one was done with a lot more operator input, and this one actually was uh, relatively successful. Uh, there were some things that had uh, some rough edges that didn't end up working out too well, uh, specifically INSEC, uh, but that was, that was solved relatively quickly. And even with the few, the, the flaws that DNSSEC had originally, in October of 2005, the Swedish top level domain .se was signed. This was rather amazing, you know, going from March to October, you didn't have a large length of uh, large time for deployment, and yet they were able to deploy it, uh, get, it get their uh, top level domain signed, and validation was able to be done at SE and under uh, that domain, that top level domain. One of the things that the, uh, the uh, Swedish registry did was uh, they actually reduced the prices um, of domains, if you were willing to DNSSEC sign your domain, then they would actually allow you to um, uh, get a, a lower price for the registration of the domain name. So they actually were a, a great incubator for the uh, use of DNSSEC and uh, were one of the organizations that really helped things to take off. Now I mentioned the problem, uh, one of the original problems with uh, DNSSEC biz was that there was something called INSEC. And we'll, we'll talk about that in detail uh, later in the series. But INSEC uh, had some issues with uh, allowing the enumeration of, uh, of labels within a domain name. So if you knew the name of a domain, you could basically go through and figure out every single label that existed within that domain. 
well, that wasn't appropriate for some organizations. And uh, so something had to be done. So in 2008, a new RFC was published that was uh, uh, creating a new uh, resource record called the INSEC3 record. INSEC3 was a hashed proof of non-existence. Um, we'll, we'll, again, we'll go into this in, in great detail uh, later in the series. So then it took another two years after that to actually get the root zone signed. So from 2005, the publication of the, uh, the, the current DSX standard to 2010 to get the root uh, signed. Uh, it worked very well. Uh, there were a few repercussions, but nothing uh, major. Uh, that was a, it was a very extended process uh, getting that uh, signing done. Uh, there was a, a period uh, during which the root was signed with a key that was not available, uh, with the, where the public portion was not available. So we were able to do um, analysis on the uh, bandwidth usage um, and any fragmentation issues when the root zone became significantly larger with the uh, associated signatures in it. Uh, 2012, uh, there was a major uh, RFC published, which was DANE. Uh, that stands for the DNS-based authentication of named entities. And I honestly think that a lot of people spend more time figuring out cute acronyms than, uh, than necessarily working on the work under the covers. But this was a fantastic piece of work because it allows the use of certificates that have their root in the DNS instead of at a certificate authority. So this allows you, if you have a DNS sec sign zone and it's actually uh, validated from the root, you're actually able to put certificate information in it so that SSL is allowed to be used um, without the need to have worked with a, a certificate authority to actually have the, uh, the uh, certificate created. Um, also in 2012, uh, DN uh, Microsoft uh, included DNSSEC signing in uh, their uh, uh, server series. Um, one of the issues here is that if it was an, a, a, an AD integrated zone, um, it would not, uh, could not be signed. Uh, so this was only uh, able to be used for static zones, but it did bring even the, uh, the Microsoft uh, contingent into the use of, uh, of DNSSEC. And in 2014, um, we uh, received some new, uh, a, a new RFC uh, documenting the automation of DNSSEC delegation trust maintenance. So one of the things that we'll talk about a lot towards the end of this series is how to go about rolling over a key. How do you go about changing your key material in such a way that people with either the older key um, and newer signatures or the newer signature or newer key and older signatures, how all of that continues to work even though um, the, the key material underneath is changing. Um, there were some major uh, uh, updates in 2014 uh, the introduction of the CDS record, which allows a DS record in the child. And again, we'll talk about all of this later um, in, the, uh, in the series. So that um, there have been a couple of other things that have occurred since, but those are the, the major, major highlights um, in the history of DNSSEC up until this point. Now, going back to um, uh, Steve Bellavan's uh, 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 paper, um, it's actually available now. Uh, the URL there is listed at the bottom and you can actually do a search for it. It's very easy to find. Um, you can actually follow Steve on uh, Twitter. He's a very uh, an interesting character. Um, he's at Steve Bellavan on Twitter, so you can, uh, you can follow him. Um, the paper was written in 1990 and it was withheld from publication. When it was published, it wasn't modified. So it does show the internet as only having 200,000 hosts. I honestly do not know exactly when this was released um, in its entirety, um, but it was, uh, it was, it's a very interesting read. Um, if any of you remember uh, using R login and uh, RSH and uh, the hosts equiv file, um, you'll, you'll know immediately what a significant portion of this, uh, of this paper resolves or revolves around. So the DNSSEC security extensions uh, described in uh, RFC 2065 in 1996 um, allowed zone administrators to sign a zone. That's the original one that, that didn't work too well. Um, RFC 4033 and 4035 are the updates to DNSSEC biz. Uh, they were produced in March of 2005. 
It was specifically broken up into three uh, separate uh, RFCs. Uh, the first that was the introduction and requirements. So basically the, the preamble as to what this plan is actually going to do. Um, RFC 4034, uh, which was the resource records for the DNS security extension. So this was the additions to the protocol that were required uh, for the uh, uh, use of uh, DNSSEC. And then RFC 4035, which were the modifications to the existing protocol to allow this to occur. And as we talk more about the uh, individual resource records, we'll also talk about the protocol modifications. But the biggest one that you'll see is if you, if you know DNS, you know that a C name can be the only uh, label or the only resource record at a given label. And that is actually modified in DNSSEC by the DNSSEC um, RFCs uh, because now you need to actually have a signature associated with that C name. So that's the, the biggest change that you'll see. Um, RFC 5155 uh, was the uh, introduction of NSEC 3. And again, the zone enumeration um, NSEC, the original uh, ability to uh, prove non-existence within a zone, uh, created a linked list of these NSEC records uh, that allowed a, 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 a you know, anyone, I was going to say a bad actor, but basically anyone to go out and by pulling a single resource record from a, or a single label from a zone, follow the chain of NSEC records to then enumerate the entire zone. And uh, there were some uh, organizations with contractual obligations uh, that were not able to deploy DNSSEC specifically because of this. Um, it, if you deploy NSEC, you may as well allow zone transfers. Um, that's, that's basically what it rolls down to. And there are actually tools available um, in the uh, NL NetLabs uh, toolbox uh, that allow you to, uh, to walk through a zone. Uh, so NSEC 3 solved uh, the issue of zone enumeration in DNSSEC. Um, and then again, uh, RFC 6698 uh, documented Dane, which was again, the DNS-based authentication of named entities, uh, allowing TLS keys uh, to be provided in DNS. Now you can do this uh, but they're only valid if you deploy DNSSEC because if you aren't able to validate um, the uh, content of your zone, then obviously you don't want to be publishing a, a TLS certificate that, um, that is uh, not provably good. Um, RFC 7344 uh, um, is the uh, RFC that introduces the CDS and CDNS keys. Um, these are going to be records that uh, you can deploy within your child zone uh, to then modify records in the zone above, in the parent zone. And when we get into the uh, information on how um, uh, the DNSSEC validation works, uh, you'll understand why this is important. Because one of, the, one of the biggest problems with DNSSEC is not the signing of the zone, but it's actually the re-signing of the zone with new keying information and making sure that your parent zone has the correct information to allow your, uh, uh, your entire zone to continue to be validated uh, during the, uh, the key rollover. So uh, 2005, uh, there wasn't a lot of, uh, of DNSSEC and you can see that this is January of 2005 through January of 2012. Um, not a lot of movement. And this uh, information was actually pulled from a UCLA project uh, called Sex Spider. And Sex Spider was a, a uh, spidering tool that they would run and would go out and look for uh, DS records um, in zones. And it would look for signed zones and then it would make some assumptions about those and uh, then and walk the zones as it could. Um, the, the project is, is no longer around, and unfortunately, I, I don't know where this, uh, this data is. I'm sure that it's still out there somewhere. Um, but it's a very interesting, you notice that in uh, January of 2010, or in the year of 2010, there's a tremendous, uh, nearly vertical uh, uh, spike that, uh, that, that occurs uh, that, that really uh, got uh, DNSSEC kind of boosted. And uh, the thing that was interesting about that is that it was done by uh, the Czech Republic, uh, by Chechia. 
And it was done in January of 2010. Um, overnight, uh, they signed 14,236 zones. Uh, this was done uh, by one of the registrars by Web4U. Um, and one night they said, okay, we're gonna sign all of the zones that are registered uh, through us. And they did it. And uh, it uh, was quite an amazing, uh, as I noted, as, as I showed you there, a, a, a amazing vertical uh, bar in the uh, deployment of DNSSEC. So uh, thank you very much to the uh, organization that decided to do that. And uh, it was a, an amazing thing, uh, something that uh, was, was quite, uh, quite astronomical at the time. Um, so from that point, uh, this is through uh, last year. Um, this is uh, at VeriSign Labs, and this is still uh, in, in place. And this is a, uh, a, um, a chart that shows by count. So you can see that uh, we're, you know, we, we've broken the uh, 1 million mark as far as uh, how many zones have been, uh, have been signed um, the, uh, in .com. Uh, .net, uh, you'll see, is also, uh, is also uh, moving, moving up. Um, XYZ, uh, I'm not sure exactly why they chose this one, but it, it actually has, has gone down uh, a couple, which is rather interesting. Uh, one of the things that has occurred with the new uh, generic TLDs that have been, uh, been created is that one of the requirements is that they be DNSSEC signed. So that's going to be another driver for uh, DNSSEC is that the new uh, TLDs that are coming online are going to be already uh, prepared for DNSSEC validation. But all of the, uh, the, the uh, uh, GTLDs are at this point and most of the CCTLDs as well. So that looks like it's a very impressive, you know, we're, we're moving, moving forward. Uh, that's fantastic. What a great movement upwards. Um, the problem with that is that now we're going to look at it by percentage. And uh, you'll notice that by percentage, um, .NET is actually ahead of .com. Uh, and we're still only at 1% there and at less than 0.8% uh, um, within uh, .com. So we're, we're moving in the right direction, uh, but it still needs a lot of, uh, a lot of push. And by attending this uh, seminar, I'm, I'm hoping that you will be able to and, uh, and uh, be willing to go out and uh, deploy DNSSEC and we'll, we'll see uh, some, other, some other large uh, increases in this graph. So as far as BIND goes, from the ISC perspective, uh, BIND 9.2 was the first uh, version of BIND, pardon me, <coughs> the first version of BIND that implemented the DNSSEC specification. Um, that was released in 2004. Um, and again, it was a, an implementation, but the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, RFC changed, uh, the specification changed significantly. And so by 9.3, which was released in 2005, uh, introduced full support for the new and current version of DNSSEC. Um, it also introduced support for signed dynamic zones. And uh, a long, long time ago, uh, somebody asked me what was the use of dynamic zones. And at that point, I really, you know, other than, you know, organizations that used DHCP and a little portion of their of their organization, you know, that would be about the only reason you'd use a dynamic zone. Well, I've, I've now come full circle and uh, every one of the zones that I maintain is a dynamic zone, specifically for the reason of doing DNSSEC automation. Uh, being able to have signed dynamic zones is, is absolutely fantastic and it reduces the amount of maintenance required significantly. Um, 2008, uh, ISC released uh, by 9.6, uh, introducing support for Insect 3 records and uh, improved support for dynamic sign zones. Um, 2010, uh, by 9.7, uh, introduced new functions to make DNSSEC easier to set up and maintain. Uh, that was, uh, uh, by 9.7 was the DNSSEC for humans uh, release. And uh, that was a, a fantastic, uh, some of the uh, um, it wasn't just that uh, there were additional options added. It was the fact that a lot of the options were uh, defaults were set to something that actually worked very well for deployment. So by 9.7 was the, the first time it was really easy 
to start deploying uh, DNSSEC on Bind. Uh, Bind 9.9 in 2012 uh, introduced inline signing uh, for static master zones and for slave zones. So this we'll get into again uh, later in the, uh, in the series, uh, but what this allows you to do is maintain your existing infrastructure where you have static zones and still do dynamic, basically dynamic DNSSEC signing. Uh, this introduces a system in line with your, uh, uh, between your primary and secondary servers. And this allows you to uh, do DNSSEC signing without modifying your existing infrastructure other than introducing one machine in between. So by 9.11 in 2016, um, added some additional um, uh, elliptical curve um, algorithms uh, for DNSSEC signing. And it also provided the DNSSEC key manager uh, that automates a uh, key, uh, that assists in automating key and signing policies. Um, this version of BIND also introduced something called a negative trust anchor. And we'll get into that later in the, uh, in the series. Uh, this basically allowed a large operator who recognized a broken zone that had DNSSEC deployed, but for some reason it was deployed in such a way that it was basically failing for not a good reason. Um, probably, usually it was with a key, a failed key rollover. Um, they, uh, the uh, operators were able to insert a negative trust anchor that allowed that zone to continue to work instead of giving back serve fails. Uh, bind 9.12 in 2018, uh, got rid of an option on dig called SIG chase. Um, that was an option that actually allowed you to do some DNSSEC debugging by chasing signatures. Um, it was uh, code that was not well maintained and was actually dropped and was replaced by a new utility called Delve. Uh, Delve was introduced and that allows you to use to do the same functionality as the SIG chase, but with uh, superior code and uh, a, a very much better code base. Um, also in 2018, uh, by 9.13, turned on DNSSEC validation auto uh, by default and disabled the ability to build bind without DNSSEC support. So as of bind 9.13, you basically have to have um, the libraries required for uh, DNSSEC. Um, and you also, um, it would bind, if you did not tell it not to do validation, it began doing validation automatically. Uh, by 9.15, which is the current development branch uh, at this point, uh, DLV, uh, the domain locuside validation has been obsoleted. That registry is no longer, uh, no longer available. Um, the validation code has been refactored. So uh, all of the, uh, uh, it's, it's significantly uh, faster and more robust than it was previously. Uh, the, there were two configuration options previously called managed keys and trusted keys. That has now been merged into a single option uh, called DNSSEC keys. Uh, DNSSEC keys ha now has sub options to specify if the key is actually to be used in a timed rollover or uh, RFC 5011, um, or if it's a permanent trust anchor. So um, if you're familiar with the, uh, well, we'll, we'll again, we'll talk about this in the future. I don't wanna, I don't wanna bore you having to talk about it twice and I want you to come back. So we'll talk about this later in the series. Um, 9.15, um, we uh, actually are introducing a, a DNSSEC policy, uh, which allows you to, within bind, without needing an external additional feature or additional uh, application, do a key and signing policy within namedy.conf. Um, we're gonna talk about this. There's actually an entire uh, one uh, presentation specifically on the key and signing policy. Um, one of the big things that we uh, were working very hard to make sure occurs is that it does not conflict with existing DNSSEC signing configuration. Um, for every policy, uh, we're going to get into this. Uh, we're uh, adjusting the code to implement the new policies. We're making sure that the tests are working correctly. And we're also updating the documentation to make sure that everybody is in the know as far as uh, how this uh, is going to work. Uh, in the future. So again, I said this would be a short presentation and I've actually kept it to less than 30 minutes. I was not expecting it to be quite that short. 
but I do hope that it was useful to you and uh, gives you a timeline as far as uh, the, uh, the things that occurred uh, within the, uh, the timeline of DNS and uh, DNSSEC. Um, 